Hey Travis kiddos, I have our enrichment work for the day. We are going to review our phonics sound and sight words for the week. I'll go over the Your Turn workbook pages um, along with a little bit of um, reading work. And um, I have the math workbook page and some strategies for that. I also have a PE challenge for you, of course, and um, some recommendations for Asian American and Pacific Islander American um, Heritage Month. If you would like to read some or listen to some stories uh, by Asian American authors, you can check the description below. There are some great read alouds there um, by other people um, for you to listen to. Also, if you haven't yet, I recommend checking out the Scholastic News article. Did you guys enjoy learning about how ice cream's made in the Scholastic News article this week? I sure did. What's your favorite flavor? So let's get to the phonics. So this week, we are working on these sounds. See if you remember what sounds these letters make. Er, n, n. Remember, we're working on silent letters this week. So the W is silent here. It's just a R, just the R is making the noise. Here, the K is silent. It's just the N making the noise. And here, just the N is making the noise. The G is silent. Hey, do you remember or do you know this week's sight words? See if you can get them all. Did you get them? Let me go through them with you just in case. Bin, children, month, question, their, year. Hopefully you got them without me. If not, you're always welcome to read along with me. <laughs> so I'm gonna uh, introduce a concept we've worked on before and, and, and talked about and introduced. Um, it is compound words. So a compound word is taking two words that are full words on their own and putting them together to make a new word. For example, lunchtime is a compound word. All of these are compound words. We're gonna split them up into the two words that they make. Okay, so lunchtime. Do you know what two words go together to make lunchtime? Lunch and time. So lunch plus time together makes the compound word lunchtime. How about knee pad? What two words make knee pad? Hmm, is it neep and ad? Mm, that doesn't quite sound right. It's <laughs> knee and pad. And you should wear those if you're riding roller skates or a scooter or something to protect those knees of yours. <laughs> okay, next one. Sunlight. What two words come together to make the compound word sunlight? Sun and light. Sun plus light makes the compound word sunlight. How about snowstorm? Hmm. What two words come together to make the word snowstorm? Snow and storm. How about classroom? Class plus room. Are you getting the idea yet? We're gonna do the last two. Whoops, which I'm erasing a little bit, sorry. <laughs> Rainfall. What two words create the word rainfall? Can we split them up? It's rain and fall. How about cupcake? The two words are cup and cake. Cupcake. So those are compound words and um, we've practiced putting two words together to make compound words. Now, We've had a little practice splitting apart the two words from the compound word. 
which is what you're going to be doing on your Your Turn Workbook, page 304. Okay, so they have ant plus hill equals ant hill. So um, you are going to read each compound word and write the two smaller words that you see in each word. So raindrop, you're going to split up into the two words. Rowboat, you're going to split up into the two words all the way one through four, and then write a sentence using one or two of the compound words above, okay? So that's page 304 in your Your Turn workbook. I'm kind of working backwards here today. <laughs> you have some more phonics work on page 303, okay? Read the words in the box, and then you're gonna write the word in each sentence that completes the sentence correctly. Okay, so remember we're focusing on those silent letters that I just went over, so you should be able to read those words. Okay, you also have um, a new concept called a simile. We haven't gone over similes before. Um, a simile is something where you compare one thing to another thing using words like or as. Okay, you could say the puddle is as big as a lake. So you notice you use as twice, or you could say the wind felt like an ice cube. Okay, so like once, as twice. So sometimes we use similes to help you picture um, or feel what something might be like. Okay, there are sometimes exaggerations, um, but it helps give a sense of um, the strong feelings or emotions or the strong picture you want to create for someone. You might write one, you might read one. Okay, so um, you're going to be figuring out the similes on page 302 today. Okay, so you're going to read each sentence, underline the words like or as, and then circle the things that are being compared. So I wanna go over a couple of these with you because they are a little bit tricky and I wanna make sure that you're comfortable doing this page. So um, let's read the first sentence. The storm was like a roller coaster. Can you imagine that? A storm like a roller coaster, wow. Okay, so um, we need to underline like or as. What do you see in that first sentence? I see like. So I'm going to underline, put a line under, like. Then we're going to circle the two things being compared. What's being compared here? The storm is being compared to a roller coaster. Okay, so a roller coaster has a lot of twists and turns. It throws you all over the place. It's fast. It's wild. So I assume that storm is not a calm little drizzle. It's a wild, crazy storm that might throw you around or cause you some chaos, right? <laughs> okay, the house is as dark as a cave. This is number two. The house is as dark as a cave. So first we need to underline as or like. What do we see in that sentence? We see as. So I'm going to underline as both of them. Remember, as you use twice. So as dark as a cave. So we know that dark is the thing that they're trying to get us to picture. But what two words are they using to compare to tell us how dark it is? Hmm. The house is as dark as a cave. Oh my goodness. So um, we're not circling dark. That's just something to help us know because you could say the house is as big as a cave and then you might have a different picture in your head, right? Or the house was oops, as damp as a cave. That would give you a different picture, right? So they want you to know it's dark, but the house is the thing that's like a cave. Caves are very dark. Right? So we can imagine that that house is pitch black, needs some lights in there. So you go ahead and finish the last three there, and then you're going to choose one of these sentences to draw a picture of. Okay? So you're going to draw, so for number one, you wouldn't draw a roller coaster, but you would draw a really, really wild storm. For number two, you wouldn't draw a cave. You could draw two separate pictures, but what they want you to show is how dark the house is or how wild the storm is, OK? 
okay? So you're drawing the thing that they're making a comparison to. Um, so uh, the actual thing that they're giving you a picture of in your mind. Okay, you also have workbook page 298, cause and effect. So we've talked about this before. This event makes this event happen. Okay, you can either use Stormwatch, your paper reader, or you can reread Rain School and use that for cause and effect. Now, you already did a little bit of work on page, what page was that? Um, two, I think it was about, oh, it's on the other side of one of these. Here we go, 301. <laughs> on page 301, you already worked on cause and effect. So if you need a little bit of help, use Stormwatch, use page 301 to help you figure out page 298. Okay, if you want to challenge yourself, use Stormwatch. I'm sorry, not Stormwatch, Rain School. Now you also have Rainy Weather to read. This is the literature anthology story. This is a nonfiction text about rainy weather. Pretty interesting. Okay, you had your realistic fiction of Rain School, and then Stormwatch is the nonfiction text. We have a little bit of math to do today. Just one workbook page. Page 174, you need to match. So you're gonna match the frog to the lily pad. So on here, I suggest um, you either write directly on the page or you have another piece of paper or a whiteboard to write on to figure out the math. So the lily pads all have one number on them. Okay, the frogs all have a number sentence or part of a number sentence. So my recommendation would be to do the subtraction first and then try to match. Okay, so like the first frog says 83 minus 10. Now we've worked a lot on 10 less, so you might be able to figure this out pretty quickly. Or you could draw a picture, of course, or you could write it vertically. So 80, let's see, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 3 minus 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and three. So 73, or vertically, 83 minus 10. Three minus zero is still three. Eight tens minus one ten is seven tens, 73. Okay, um, you could also do number bonds. However you wanna figure it out, you are welcome to do that. But I suggest that you um, do the math and then write down that number, um, on near somewhere close to that frog, so 73. So that I know I'm looking for 73 to match that frog to its lily pad, okay? So do all the subtraction first, then start matching. Otherwise you might have some mistakes and get crazy with having to erase, cross out, whatever you're doing, <laughs> okay? Um, last but certainly not least, we have a PE challenge. Let's go for that. Okay, kiddos, we've got 20 sit-ups today. Do you think you can do it? We, of course, have options. So you can have your knees bent with your feet down. You can have your legs straight out. You can make a butterfly with your legs, whatever you wanna do. You might even wanna put your feet under something. So if you can hook them under your couch or something so that you, um, have a little bit of an easier time getting up, go for it. Your hand's gonna be here, 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 wherever. I'm gonna keep them kind of down low. Let's do it. Ready? Okay, starting at the ground, then we sit all the way up. One, two, go at your pace. Three, four, try to keep your feet down better than I'm doing. Five, six, seven, Keep going. Eight, nine, ten. Are you feeling the burn? You should feel this in your stomach. Eleven, twelve, your abdominal muscles. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, almost there. Sixteen, they might get a little harder at the end and that's okay. Eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Woo, feel that burn. How did that go? 
Man, that must have been tough. I hope you're working on building those muscles, getting stronger, getting some exercise and movement. Um, it keeps you healthy and in good spirits. Good job on everything today, guys. Um, again, if you want to check out those read-alouds for um, Asian American and Pacific Islander American Heritage Month, um, you can go ahead and check those out. I'll, I'll bring back some more books each week for that since we have a whole month to celebrate. Um, and as always, happy learning.